All right, Jason Rona back here in the J Concepts Garage for another vlog episode here with Fred Reap. Uh, recently, Fred, we made a trip uh, back up to Missouri, uh, sort of the uh, monster truck capital of the world up there uh, for RC and for the, the real trucks. But uh, talk to us. You got the, the van loaded up. This time we were bringing some items with us. Uh, you had some uh, parts that you were bringing with. We uh, towed up a few things. Yeah, we towed up a few things. All roads lead to St. Louis, Missouri, I guess. And uh, yeah, over you know, 16 plus hour trip. You know, we decided to do uh, Lonnie Childress and uh, Jason Childress. They had their racing program going. So we had the J Concepts van full of RC monster trucks, and we had some uh, fiberglass headed up there for uh, Bigfoot number eight. We're doing a delivery for Star Creations for Bigfoot eight. And uh, Bigfoot 4, we had some final uh, body parts for that. Yeah, so, you know, there was a lot of different parts to this thing. You mm -hmm. know, front bumper, rear bumper, we got the cab, we mm -hmm. got the front clip, the bed size. I mean, there's a lot of parts to this thing. Yeah, the whole nine yards. Uh, you know, if it was on Bigfoot 8 back in the uh, 90s, it's going to be on the truck again. So making the trip up, uh, part of the reason was you wanted to, uh, um, you know, we got some photos that we take along the way. And, uh, you know, you kind of fit up some components, you mm -hmm. fit the cab and the front clip together. And, you right. know, we got some photos of you guys and you and Lonnie checking some things out and, you know, just kind of looking at how this stuff's going to fit when it comes time to uh, drop it on a truck, right? Yeah, we think we have issues with these RCs. I mean, there's nothing compared to really working on the 1-1. One -one. I mean, things really have to be exact. People are going to, thousands of people are going to be seeing this displayed. So, you know, the body's got to be just right. And Star, you know, those guys, I can't thank those guys enough from actually taking something that was non-existent anymore and they made it come back to life again. It's simply amazing. Yeah, no pun intended, but it was in the grave yeah. <laughs> and, and we had to bring it back out, right? Yeah, resurrected from the grave, definitely. So getting up there, we got through the Bigfoot shop. Uh, we got, you know, nice enough to let us take a look at the truck that they got there mm -hmm. uh, in the works, Bigfoot 8, as they're kind of getting the freshen up done on this thing and and uh, allowing us to kind of drop a few things off, but check out this uh, number eight truck, right? Yeah, number eight, you know, always, you know, revolutionized the industry in monster truck racing. And uh, yeah, just to see it, you know, come back and go through its cycle of life. And now it's being reborn again, basically, getting all freshened up, looking nice. The guy's doing a great job, you know, working on the truck and getting it back up to snuff. But uh, yeah, what old is new? You know, what can I say? It's, it's going to be great. You know, I, the fans... You know, just seeing them online, it's they're getting really excited for it. Yeah, I mean, that you know, obviously the Bigfoot guys keep us up to date on their progress of mm -hmm. the freshen up they're doing and getting the thing back together. And you know, you guys, we got some photos, you know, kind of some things, uh, steps along the way of getting four back together. But right. uh, just kind of an exciting time with with those two vehicles getting. Uh, getting some attention. Yeah, getting some attention. You know, eight, probably a little bit easier project. You know, there's some things that were changed on four over the years that Lonnie and the great good guys up at Gateway Mustang, you know, they've had to go, go back now and then, uh, you know, basically redo parts of the truck that needed to be fixed, you know, to fit the new body, where eight was pr relatively untouched as far as the cage and all that stuff. But uh, four will rise again and uh, it's going to be good times. So, you know, one of the things we did is in preparation to kind of get us going up there is uh, we knew we were going to race at the Childress Racing, uh, you know, the winter series they got going on there. And uh, we got some of our vehicles ready to mm -hmm. go. Uh, you worked on our, you know, our Louisville Bigfoot 4. And, of course, we brought the new truck uh, for us was the this USA 1 uh, 88 body. And uh, you went ahead and, you know, this was something we've had kind of sitting around here for a while. And we're like, hey, let's go ahead and run the USA 1, right? Yeah, let's run the USA 1. I was going to look visually under the chassis a little bit different. You know, this is some sample parts, I guess, we had laying yeah. around. And uh, just tried something a little different. And I uh, thought it came out well. Yeah, so there in the Childress Racing uh, series what they have is they have the the retro class and mm -hmm. then they had the sport mods so uh, we prepped two retros and then we prepped uh, two sport mods and uh, you know they're here uh, showing behind us but you know we ran sort of the power wheels looking one and then we had the the e bigfoot we called it which is based on a paint job that they used for sema yeah uh, never really uh, ran it in a competition you know like we ran the rcs but yeah it's definitely a cool look and people like that yeah, it's really cool fits in kind of with the rc and the electric yeah we had some great paint jobs along the way you know uh, between you know dark side designs and then our decals mm -hmm. and putting these together 
uh, stuff that we've had. And, you know, we thought it was nice to kind of break out a few fresh designs. Right? Yeah, do some fresh ones. And then, you know, some things that people haven't seen before, it makes it neat. Everybody gets excited over that stuff. So getting into the race, um, you know, I didn't really quite know what to expect. I knew they were going to run a straight line and a Chicago style mm -hmm. race format there. But uh, straight line, I think I've only done one time before was at the Bigfoot open house. But, uh, you know, you did a lot of uh, wrenching. We got our trucks, uh, make sure that they're the right weight there. They always make sure that we're at the right weight. Yeah, right weight, right gearing. Yeah. And then we got set up to run the straight line course and uh, Josh Rhodes ended up winning the straight line portion mm -hmm. in the retro. I had both of my trucks, I believe, either in the semi or close. And Josh, you know, knocked me out with his Bigfoot yeah. uh, with the regulator chassis. But, you know, watching the straight line stuff, you, Fred, you've run a bunch of this and you've set them up too. Um, what did you see watching the straight line racing in, in the retros? Yeah, things happen really fast. You know, as a driver doing that, you know, things kind of slow down. It's, it's really weird. But uh, watching them, they go really fast. A lot of things happen in that time where you know you need to keep the truck straight you know keeping the truck absolutely straight as an arrow going down the track that's a key to a win and cutting a good light of course yeah i mean uh they had this kind of a unique setup with a with a light you know it's basically just red to green mm -hmm. and uh, i mean as soon as you see that thing just peak in any kind of green whatsoever you got to be wide open yeah you got to be wide open and your skill set has got to be there any little mistake can put you on the trailer yeah, I mean, one of the kind of neat things about running the, the retros and even the sport mods on that track was there's kind of a, I believe it was a three-car stack at the beginning with two ramps, and, mm -hmm. you know, that thing would pull a little wheelie and then almost just kind of downside that back one, and then you're just trying to set up, and you're just wide open hoping you got the finish. Yeah, you kind of had that down pat by the end of the day, just kind of rolling it and carrying that front end over the cars. It really work, helps when it settles in between no man's land to set up for that next ramp. It's yeah. really important. And what's really neat about it is it's very real. You know, that's kind of mm -hmm. how a lot of this stuff worked in the, you know, in the real racing with the trucks is that technique at the start and how you could get over that first set and was it, you know, nose down, was it rear down and just trying to get the right attitude out of the vehicle right. to hit that second jump. Yep. And these even work a little bit different. You know, it is an RC truck. It's not a real monster truck. I mean, like to make that <laughs> definition there but yeah. they do work a little bit different as a 1-1 vehicle does yeah as far as you're on the power yeah absolutely and then we kind of we went over to the sport mod class uh, again we did the straight line and mm -hmm. the sport mod and uh, we had i believe in the finals what we had was uh jeremy mark and then we also had um, uh, brandon scott mm -hmm. they were in the finals together and uh, brandon was on rails uh the whole time in, in the sport mod and the straight line and uh, i believe he had a clodbuster uh, uh transmission setup vehicle right uh with the sport mod but nothing was flying yeah those trucks are flying and um, everybody did a great job up there i mean you can't discount anybody mm -hmm. i mean you don't know who's going to show up and put you on the trailer absolutely you know we had we went down the line and you know when we got set up there initially we kind of took some photos of the different drivers there mm -hmm. and I know Josh Rhodes was working on a retro for Cheech, and, and Cheech even had a good run in retro with his big boss. He was real happy with his big boss. Yeah, he gets really excited. He gets really into it. He kind of helped us out. We were on a sport mod, and we kind of had a motor confused in it, but he's helped us out again and yeah. kind of hooked him up with a motor to thank him for helping us out. So Yeah, we got a rental uh, yeah, got a motor rental that we run from, from Cheech occasionally, and I think we've got more runs on it now than he does. Yeah. But uh, I think you put a win on it at one race, and yep. then we ended up, I don't know what you did with that one again. <laughs> yeah, so we ended up with that uh, motor. We you know, got it back to Cheech. We gave him another silent speed to uh, to replace it. Uh, but that was the other thing that we were kind of running new for this weekend uh, was the silent speed motors in the retros and in the sport mods. Yeah, in the sport mod, we did this uh, swap over. You know, we were using those HPI motors. You know, earlier the uh, axial ones, and then uh, yeah, did, made this uh, the changeover, and they're running really well. Kind of. Uh, you know, lubed up all the bushings in it, make sure they spin really nice, and uh, yeah, they run great. And you just rock and roll. I mean, they're closed end bells, so it is what it is, and, right. and you just, you're hoping for the best that you can get out of those things. Yeah. Just, uh, yeah, there's no, you can't change anything, so it evens the playing field as far as that's concerned. Yeah, and that's what's kind of fun about this class is you have to weigh a certain amount, and they, the power is, is limited, so right. it really comes down to the very small things. Yeah, the very small things, your tune on your speed control, the adjustments in your radio, that's pretty much all you have. Yeah, so we were able to then 
uh, they went ahead and changed the format. They went mm-hmm. to the other side of, of the building we were in, and we had a Chicago-style layout set up there, and which was different. Um, you know, two different racing brackets in the day, but you know, we got to do some turns now and a set of cars on each side. So, uh, you know, you did a lot of filming during that and, and you know, kind of watching and setting us out. But, you know, what'd you see watching on the Chicago style track and, you know, just, you know, what was really different? And obviously the light still mattered. Yeah, the light still matters. Uh, turning always puts a, another uh, differential in there that's, you know, harder to, uh, to compete. You know, it's easy. Well, it's not easy, but, you know, going in a straight line is easier than making a couple turns and then setting your truck up to go over the cars. So you have to make sure you're not overshooting the turn after you make your landing. You got to make a nice tight turn and, uh, you know, have that nice short distance around that oval to make up some time. Yeah, I mean, and for me, that was probably my uh, best opportunity was with the Bigfoot 4 Louisville truck we've been running. And for whatever reason, that seems to be my the truck that always works so well for mm-hmm. me. Uh, that's a truck we got, you know, with the regulator chassis, the four shocks on it. And, uh, but, you know, you watched and, you know, what did you think of the way the truck was working on Chicago style? Yeah, the truck work, works uh, terrific. I mean, with the four shocks, I mean, I know you like going to the, the dual shocks on each wheel. I'm kind of uh, like the, the single shock for some reason. Kind of gets the truck a little more forgiving in the, in the uh, body and the weight transfer of the truck. You know, maybe that's really what helps you out around the turning course. Yeah, what I noticed driving that truck as opposed to the USA one who we have with the eight shocks, but when that truck would would lean or it would roll, mm-hmm. it would actually get a little bit loose in the back. Yeah, and it actually kind of helped me on the Chicago style kind of get help you drift. The yeah, it was kind of getting bit. around the corners a little quicker, and and uh, it was definitely a little faster uh, running it that way than it was with with the USA one there with the eight shocks. But I mean, they both worked really well, but I was really happy with how that one ended up working. Yeah. It's been, uh, you know, you ran that one up in New York as well. And that one did terrific as well on the dirt. So yeah, it's a good setup. Yeah. It's, it's a, obviously out of the different trucks, we all try to do a little bit different little things with all these and just see if we notice anything, you know I mean? That's, uh, if, if it's possible, um, to, to set these things up different and to try them all on the same track, you kind of learn something a little each time. Yeah, you get to learn a little uh, something different. And then, uh, yeah, again, your setups. You're not constantly chasing one truck on a setup. If you have another one set up just a little bit different, you can kind of get to, well, maybe this one's working a little better. Well, maybe I could change this one a bit. Yep. So then we bounce back over to Sport Mod again. Mm-hmm. Now we're on the Chicago style. Uh, I ended up getting the TQ with, with the one, the e-Bigfoot truck that I have. But um, first race out, hit a cone, DQ'd. Uh, mm-hmm. I was out in the first round, so then I was trying to rely on the uh, the power wheels, which we got into the finals, uh, but uh, got taken down by Jeremy Mark there in, in the finals, and he ran a, an amazing pass with his uh, sudden impact truck. Yeah, you know, running the course with the cones, I mean, there's barriers there for a reason, and, uh, you know, it, it just adds another uh, obstacle in there to try and, you know, you won't want to cut the corner, you hit a cone, you're out. You slide too wide, you're out, so it makes you run a nice tight race. Yeah, I mean, it was it was great because uh, it really gives you those constraints. You know, they mm-hmm. have some walls set up on the side that say, hey, if you hit the outside walls, that's like a DQ. That's yeah. like hitting the wall in the real building. And then the cones are the cones, like if you were running a real event. So you have to stay within the rules and, and make it to the finish line. Yeah, that makes it all the more challenging for all the competitors, kind of, you know, evens everything out. What was one thing we were able to do right at the end, we were packing up, um, you know, Everyone always asks us, you know, um, you know, doing some testing here and there. Uh, we had a couple new parts we were uh, experimenting with on the truck. We had some tire stuff we were trying. Mm-hmm. We kind of left the, the track in there a little bit. You got some video uh, for me while we were, you know, doing a few laps just to see how some of these, um, you know, potential uh, tires would hook up. And, you know, we, we threw a, a, a Bigfoot paint job on, on one of the, the uh, trucks that we had there and, you know, what'd you think of the the truck going around the track? And we did a little testing. There. Yeah, you have to do some testing. That's the only way you advance. I mean, if you have the the area to do it, you you have to. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's you know just like practicing or whatever. But when you're tuning these trucks, I mean, we have such a different array of tires now, and uh, you know more to come. And you got to go out there and test. I mean, what you think may work, it may not be the right combination. But you know, Renegades were looking very impressive out there. Always a great go-to tire all the time. Yep. So. You know, you're going to have the renegade. Yeah. So what we do is we, we get out there, you know, 
lots of times I like to run either the golden years or the firestorms on the retro. Yeah. And then on the race trucks, uh, we typically just bounce right to the Renegades as mm-hmm. sort of the go-to tire. But, you know, we're spent experimenting with these different style tires that were kind of custom cut back in the 90s. Right. Uh, early 2000s stuff they were using back then. And, uh, we're, you know, we're experimenting because, you know, there's a lot of classes out there like Sport Mod, Pro Mod, where they allow you to experiment or, or try a tire that was used uh, during those days. So uh, we kind of, you know, threw something on and we want to see how these are going to work. Yeah. Again, yeah. I mean, you have to test and, you know, going out there, you think, well, maybe a whole, keep the whole set of tires even on the truck. So mm-hmm. you have, you know, the same tires front and rear. Not the case that you can run now. So yeah. you can actually swap them up from different from rear to front and you, know, you can change them from front back to rear again. So you got to go out there. You got to check the stopwatch, you know, see how it feels to you and your preferences. And uh, I think there's good things to come as far as, you know, swapping your tires around to, to dial in these trucks to make them even faster. And then kind of on top of that is just the ability to, um, you know, have these, you know, different combinations, but but then we bounce around with surfaces, mm-hmm. you know. To me, I think uh, the, the dirt surfaces are some of the most demanding in terms of you really want that forward bite. Right. And there's certain things in the dirt that you're really looking for. And I think, you know, certain ones of these tires really kind of lend themselves to each different surface. Uh, you know, like inside there at the place we're running with the Childress, you know, we got the sort of the, it's almost a tile concrete-ish kind of floor. Right. And it really, to me... It was almost reacting and sounding like a clay off-road track. Mm-hmm. You, know, you could we were, hear the chirping. Yeah, you could hear the chirping of the gold compound tires, which was really neat when you're driving. Uh, but then you go out and, you know, if you go out in the dirt, like we were at the Trigger King and out in Connecticut for our event, um, it's a whole different set of circumstances. Yeah, again, it all comes down to the stopwatch and, uh, you know, you got to go out there and make a pass. You know, if you have a good clean run, you know, you, you take that down the times come back make an adjustment one adjustment you don't go and change your whole setup over yeah you make another adjustment maybe swap a tire go back out there hit the stopwatch again just like you do an off-road right yeah it's the same exact thing so the other thing we, we were able to do is uh one of the nights we had a a nice dinner out we got to uh hook up with the king of the monster truck drivers jim kramer yeah. um along with some other uh you know lonnie you were there and tad goad and you know we had a nice little dinner and and uh, talk to us about kind of learning from Jim as you guys uh, kind of working on some of these trucks. And every so often he, he'll bust out with a, something that you didn't know before or something that might help during these builds, right? Yeah, Jim's been uh, great. I mean, you know, just hands-on. You know, he's been around the, the industry so long, you know, especially with working with four. You know, he has so much vast knowledge of that machine and you know, always the go-to guy if you had any questions. And you know, to get down and hear a story about, you know, something he did on the road, it's always a great time and uh, just appreciate him so much for that. Yeah, him and Julie really, you know, kind of coming together and really helping us, um, you know, during these trips and being real, um, you know, they'll meet us, you know, wherever we want. We just definitely want to thank them for coming out and, yeah, definitely. and uh, being a big part of, you know, all these little projects and, you know, tying some loose ends together and helping uh, when you have a big question, right? Yeah, when we have a big question and just, you know, it, helps ease the trip you know, there's a lot of hours on the road you know sometimes you know you're working on these things all the time it's nice to go and get caught up with uh, jim and julie ever you know whenever we get to make it up there but uh yeah good things to come so uh talk to us a little bit about um you know things that are upcoming you know i know there's a, a few more children's races and i know i think they're not going to get back to the trigger king uh events until you know it's still the weather kind of has to turn a little bit yeah the weather i mean i guess you need the snow tires up there right now but uh yeah uh, but lonnie the childress they're running inside so Mm -hmm. um yeah coming up i guess this coming week they have a race again and then march 14th i believe Mm -hmm. so we're gonna look to see maybe we can make that one we can't make this one coming up unfortunately but um yeah, and the schedule's still kind of iffy, you know, with this COVID thing still going on and the bad weather. So, you know, there are events out there, but nothing's set in stone yet. So we're marking them on the calendar at least uh, as soon as the opening arises, we're on it. Well, we appreciate everybody for joining us. Thanks for tuning in here, talking us a little bit, uh, Monster Truck here, our trip to Missouri, and uh, kind of giving everybody an update on 
where we're at with the with the monster truck products doing a little testing giving everyone a little sneak peek and then uh some updates on the real stuff which yeah. i know everybody also enjoys and uh, fred thanks again and uh we'll see you next time take it easy